Hello, human geographers. We are back at it again this evening. Tonight, we are going to continue our conversation of territoriality by examining boundaries. Boundaries are an invisible line that marks the extent of a state's territory. Boundaries are an expression of territoriality because it marks the extent of a state's control over an area. And since territoriality is a learned behavior, borders are human constructs. Humans decide how, when, and why they're created. And because boundaries are created by humans, they can be changed or erased by humans as well. Sometimes boundaries follow ethnic or cultural patterns in an attempt to establish nation states. But sometimes they divide nations amongst multiple states. Even boundaries based on physical features, like the crest ridges of mountain ranges or rivers, are not immune from change or disagreement. Rivers make especially poor boundaries because they often change course, as has been the case along the Rio Grande, which serves as a portion of the southern border of the United States with Mexico. So tonight, we're going to look at a variety of different boundaries. We'll examine what they are, why they matter, as well as examples. Here we go. Let's start with perhaps the easiest to define. An antecedent boundary is a boundary line established before the area in question is well populated. Ante means before. So since these invisible lines were established before an area is well populated, human characteristics tend to be less influential on the boundary. The lines may follow a known physical feature, such as mountains or rivers, or maybe a line of latitude or longitude. So the boundary between the western portions of the United States and Canada, from Minnesota to the Pacific Ocean, were established along the 49th parallel before there were many people living in this area. But the eastern portion of the boundary between the United States and Canada, from Maine to Minnesota, is an example of a subsequent boundary, which is a boundary line that is established after the area in question has been settled, and that reflects the cultural characteristics of the bounded area. There were already people in the eastern part of the United States and Canada. So people had already left their imprint on the landscape by the time the boundary line was drawn and settled. And let's make a minor adjustment to our definition of subsequent boundary. When it says reflects the cultural characteristic of the bounded area, we call that the cultural landscape. So highlight that part or put a bracket around it, but label it cultural landscape. All that means is that humans have left their imprint on the landscape and then the boundary line is drawn. For example, the boundary between France and Germany is a subsequent boundary. The modern boundary was drawn after the French nation on one side and the German nation on the other side left their imprint on the landscape. So you might see French signs and architecture in the area that became the state of France and German language signs and German architecture that you would find in the state of Germany. But the area where the two cultural landscapes come together, like Strasbourg, which is in France but near the border of Germany, may exhibit features of both cultural landscapes. The Grand Cathedral and its surrounding area is recognized as a World Heritage Site because it reflects both 
French and German influences. So a specific type of subsequent boundary is called a consequent boundary, which is a boundary line that coincides with some cultural divide, such as religion or language, also known as an ethnographic boundary. These boundaries are drawn after the establishment of a cultural landscape, so they are subsequent boundaries, but they take into account, they accommodate, they coincide with the cultural divisions, thereby separating groups of different languages, religions, and ethnicities. So the boundary between China and Vietnam was drawn based on cultural differences. The boundary between Northern Ireland, which has a larger Protestant population, and the Republic of Ireland, which is predominantly Catholic, is a consequent boundary drawn on the basis of religion. After the breakup of Yugoslavia, the boundaries of most of the states were drawn to align to specific ethnicities, as Serbia, Croatia, and Slovenia were. Changing the scale, the province of Nunavut was drawn to give the Inuit, a First Nation in Canada, their own territory. Boundaries that do not account for differences in culture or ethnicity are called superimposed boundaries. A superimposed boundary is a boundary line placed over and ignoring an existing cultural pattern. As the name implies, these boundaries are superimposed. They're drawn by outsiders, as many of the African boundaries were during the Berlin Conference in 1884. These boundaries were drawn by Europeans, pictured in red on our visual here, and completely ignored the existing cultural and political boundaries already in place in Africa, which you can see outlined in black on our image. Ethnic groups were split into multiple colonies, sometimes controlled by entirely different European countries. Still other ethnicities were drawn into colonies with other ethnic groups that they had a history of conflict with. This increased the possibility of tension, even warfare, as these colonies gained their independence and became sovereign states. Most places that were colonized have examples of superimposed boundaries. The British and French mandates in the Middle East after World War I illustrate these superimposed boundaries. And the partition of India was also superimposed. The cartographer who was responsible for drawing the lines between India and Pakistan attempted to create a consequent boundary by looking at census data and drawing lines based on religion. But the reality was an outside force imposed boundaries that forced millions of people to migrate, leading to violence as people attempted to get to a state that shared their religion. Many superimposed boundaries are also geometric. A geometric boundary is a political boundary defined and delimited and occasionally demarcated as a straight line or an arc, also known as an artificial boundary. Since an outsider is drawing superimposed boundaries, they often draw straight lines with sharp angles, as we see in the Middle East and Africa. These superimposed geometric boundaries have cut across ethnic lines and are one reason for armed conflicts that have occurred in parts of Africa. Geometric boundaries may also be more common with antecedent boundaries because little surveying has been done and no cultural features may exist to influence the boundary. As we saw earlier tonight, 
The antecedent boundary of the Western US and Canada is geometric as well because it follows a line of latitude. And most county, state, and province lines in the central and western US and Canada are also straight line geometric boundaries. Our final type of boundary is a relic boundary, which is a former boundary line that is still discernible and is marked by some cultural landscape feature, such as a fence. So relic boundaries no longer exist, but the effect of the boundary is still found. Minor grammatical note here before we go much farther. You may also see this spelled as relic boundary, but they mean the exact same thing. So many boundaries that no longer serve an official function are considered relic boundaries. So Hadrian's Wall is a relic boundary. It marked the northern border of the Roman Empire in Britain, but now lies well within England and serves no official function. During the Cold War, the Berlin Wall, which surrounded all of West Berlin, and a larger boundary, which separated East and West Germany, are now both considered relics. But the effect is still felt. West Germany and West Berlin were both occupied by capitalist powers, including the United States, while the East was occupied by the communist Soviet Union. Even today, the per capita GDP throughout Germany bears the scars from the Cold War as the parts occupied by the communist Soviets have much lower per capita GDPs. And that is where we will leave our discussion tonight as we prepare to examine this in much more detail with lots more examples when we return to class. Have a good evening, geographers.